everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps that are in the description below. This week we don't have any further information on Reichbusters Project Vril, Enchanters, or Darkest Dungeon the board game, but let's get to the rest of everything else. For Joan of Arc today, the development and production processes are officially over. We sent all the files to the factory on Friday, and now we're reviewing all the files with them to start production of the pre-production copies, or PPCs, which should arrive in our offices not too long from now. Once we approve all those PPCs, making sure that there are no printing issues, missing materials, and so on, we'll be able to start formal production of the game. The last week of finalizations has really been hard on our staff as we had to compile all of your recent feedback regarding Teutonic Knights into the books and unit cards. Your hard work and dedication were outstanding with emails coming from multiple backers in addition to public comments on the files and questions being asked all over the place. We truly want to thank you from the bottom of our developer hearts. We will notify you again once the PPCs and such arrive in our office and with any further development coming our way before shipping the game to you. We've also received a good bit of feedback concerning the storage solution mockups that we shared last time. And we've continued working with game trays in the process of puzzling the solution out. Concerning the female mold hex tray design, they said that the idea is to have the unique separators that can even be stickered on the tabs so that what you want can be seen at a glance. They assured us that while it looks like space is being wasted with this design, it is the most compact way to store these hexes, resulting in the smallest box size. But they also acknowledge that there is additional room in the center of this tray that could be used to hold other components and have asked what we thought could go there. Concerning the banners, they've asked where we'd like to store them, stating that if we chose to put them in with the cubes, we might just need to make uh, general cavities in those spots, since the cube slides that they currently have wouldn't work with the banners too. And to further the idea that this is still very much a work in progress, they also sent a general pick of some other components that they're still finding a spot for in the solution, stating that most will go in the token scenario tray, while some of the larger tiles from the ARS Nova will go in the mid tray. So rest assured that your voices are being heard, and we will produce the absolute best stored solution we can with the guidance and expertise of game trays. For Solomon Kane today, fulfillment has begun. Quartermaster Logistics, VFI Asia, VR Distribution, and Spiral Galaxy are all shipping product to backers as we currently are speaking. And Meeple Logistics will begin to ship on March 8th. Now, QML first shipments will not include the neoprene mats. They are on the container still making its way to the hub. But instead of holding shipments, we'll be shipping these individually once they arrive to the hub. We have also been made aware of the missing neoprene mats for VFI Asia backers and wanted to reassure them that these will ship out once general fulfillment is completed for VFI Asia. We apologize for the inconvenience, of course, but we will do our best to get those mats to you as soon as possible once all the core and arsenal boxes are in your hands. On a side note, we just wanted to make sure you're all aware that Adam Smith of Rolling Solo has been playing through the Rattle of Bones story and posting videos of it as he goes. He just posted his third video in that series yesterday, and these are giving you a great first look at the product you'll all be receiving very soon. I'll have the links for each of them in the description below, so go check those out. For Super Fantasy Brawl today, we wanted to mention a few tidbits of information regarding Super Fantasy Brawl. First and foremost, we wanted to make sure you find the link in the description below that will take you to the Notify Me link for the Round 2 Kickstarter that launches on May 9th. Also, Becca Scott has recently posted a How to Play video for Super Fantasy Brawl. It's very well produced as usual. Uh, Rodney Smith will also be doing a How to Play video for it as well, so be on the lookout for that too. 
You can also play Super Fantasy Brawl on Board Game Arena now. So if you want to try Super Fantasy Brawl without even knowing the rules, you can play online on a computer, a tablet, or a smartphone. So check out the beta version available today on Board Game Arena platform. It's the perfect way to test gameplay. Nine champions are already available and more will be added regularly. Also, don't forget to check out the new Facebook group created for round for the round two Kickstarter. And as already alluded, you can find the links to the videos and web pages mentioned here in the description below. For Hell the Last Saga today, first of all, we'd like to thank you for the praise we received on our last update. Your encouragements have galvanized us in working hard to achieve the best possible narrative experience that we can. Without your support, the project could not move forward smoothly. We look forward to putting the parts we've tested online and we will notify the applicable playtest candidates beforehand, starting with the French speakers while the English translation is being completed. Additionally, myself and the rest of the communications team who answer you in the various threads, such as comments on these videos, on Discord, and on Facebook, brought up many questions we haven't answered yet, notably about translations and the storage box, among some others. And we are currently preparing an FAQ type update to bring you the information you're seeking in these areas. Now, during previous updates, we talked a lot about gameplay, but now it's time to talk about another aspect of the project that's just as important to give substance to the story we want to tell. And so begins the series of close-ups to the visual artists without whom hell would not exist. This week, we'll start with Tatiana Kuprianova. When our artistic director, Christoph Madur, began to imagine the world of Hell, the last saga, he had a dark, cold world in mind, but was convinced that it could only exist in contrast to amazingly colorful characters. He found in Tatiana the ideal artist, capable of breathing both cold and warmth into his original concepts. Tatiana is originally from St. Petersburg, Russia, and practices digital painting in addition to classic oil painting and sculpture. Her influences are found in both Craig Mullins and Ilya Rapin, a great Slavic master. She's been practicing her talent for more than five years now, allowing her vision to be reflected in many titles, such as Path of Exile, Elder Scrolls Online, and Mythgard, just to name a few. Passionate about Celtic culture and not shy about doing extensive research to bring the touch of realism necessary to make each hero credible, Tatiana is also a diligent gamer. Arkham Horror and Fantasy Flight's Mansions of Madness are her favorite games. It was enough to convince us that she was the perfect match to accompany us on this horrifically epic tale that will be Hell, The Last Saga. From heroes to hostiles to items, Tatiana's masterfully rough touch will bring the consistency needed to create a truly memorable. Boom! Hey, I'm back. We are still uh, live pirating this little signal here, so thanks for joining me. Now today, I don't have a whole lot of extra stuff because I wasn't able to play a lot of new games over this past week. So, you know, doing these every week, it means that some of them are going to be a little bit thin while the other ones might be a little bit more robust. So just keep that in mind as we continue going on. Keep it on the down low so we can keep doing this together. All right, cool. So this week I'm going to I'm gonna, it's gonna seem like I'm kind of, you know, bowing to the man, so to speak, but that's not really the case. I just wanted to give you another unbiased look at a game that Captain Bias has been talking about recently because we're just starting to fulfill it finally after so long. I just wanted to say that I've been playing the Rattle of Bones scenario, the same one that Mr. Stuffy Pants was talking about that Adam Smith is doing. 
It is such a cool game. We've only played through part of it. I'm going to finish it up tomorrow night with my buddy. And it's been so fun. This is the second one that I've done uh, in Solomon Kane since we received it. I started with the uh, Right Hand of Doom scenario uh, when I got it. And then we went from that to the Rattle of Bones. And it is such a cool story. Um, a, I'm not even going to say it because you, you were kind of expecting it, but oh, it was still really cool when it happened because you're able to, I, I can't tell you what it was. That would be giving too much away, but it was really cool when it happened. I'll just put it that way. Anyway, we're really enjoying it, my buddy JT and I, and it's just been really cool. Wanted to give you a little bit of a different perspective. I know uh, Captain Bias has been just plugging this thing lately because, you know, it's what he has to do because of his job, but I'm not like that. So <laughs> I just wanted to give you another look. Go check out Adam's stuff. He's been doing a great job. Quackalope's going to be putting something out here pretty soon. I know Jeremy Howard has been talking about it as well. Um, King of Average put some stuff out there too. So go check all that stuff out. It's really cool. And they know what they're talking about, kind of. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, this has been shorter, but it's not. That's okay. It's okay. I just wanted to give you an unbiased look, an unbiased opinion of this next story that I've been playing from Solomon Kane. So, cool. Thanks. Again, keep it on the down low. Let's get this back to uh, uh, Captain, you know, whatever. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow uh, at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So, tune in if you have any questions or just to see what he might spoil. That's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, and play some games while you're at it. We'll see you on the flip side. Take care. <laughs>